Dang. Y'all couldn't hear me, could you? Can y'all hear me now? Oh. Hey, hey. Golly, y'all had a great introduction, too. Could y'all hear the music when y'all came? Did y'all hear the music when we started? Did y'all hear the music when we started? Y'all, listen, I, my introduction was amazing. It was immaculate. Dang. Y'all, I was, I was in my zone. Okay, we got to start over. Let's get it. We starting this thing over, y'all. Let's buy some land and build a family, that's a grown-up flex And see a black man winning and get so upset This is generational, inspirational, integrative though On the ride vertically, working like I ain't made it though This is for my people, locker room speeches Listen while I'm teaching, nails trying like a kiss Stole it like I'm Jesus and brought it back like a re-up Had to demonstrate the blessing for people who couldn't see it Now we building assets before we splurge our cash We was talking about the dream, dog. we heard y'all laugh Now they talking about the team and I heard y'all last I can never take the credit I prefer all cash Look, laughing at the crib Cause I done turned into a bank Probably turned into a mogul Before I turned into a saint Was just a man on his grind And I turned it into great Turn my struggle into hustle And you know I'm getting paid Hey, yeah, uh, y'all, y'all know I'm getting used to this podcast Pod class stuff So I appreciate y'all for rocking with me <laughs> Welcome back to the Pride Banker Society Banker Cousins This is Dr. Jake Taylor Jacobs You're a host of the Pride Banker Society well, we focus on restoring families. We want to make families great again. I know it's this world that we live in and everybody's teaching us that families aren't as important to do things independently, that you don't need no friends. You can do it all bad by yourself. But I've been a part of a world where I was alone and that wasn't the world I wanted to be in. And we built restoring families and our fortune that we're supposed to have based on our inheritance from God Almighty. We focus on the four value system pillars that we believe every family should focus on. Restoring focus, restoring family, restoring finances, and restoring your faith. If you can restore those four things and build up pillars that are strong and things that you can count on, it's our belief that you can turn any situation around and you can be able to live the life that God intended for you to live. Y'all ready for the show to start, Banker Cousins? Let me see some bees in the chat. Oh, that was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. See, you got to learn how to celebrate yourself. That was an amazing intro. Golly. Somebody said, who was that? The name of the track. Um, That's actually um, one of my friends. I had him write and create. He and I co-created some songs. So some of the songs on the album, y'all, we got like an album. I was a a co-writer on some of the songs on the album. Um, and that's going to be uh, our private bank society uh, mixtape track. We got a mixtape. We got a private bank society like album that's like inspirational. It's uplifting. It's encouraging. Uh, so when you're going through tough times, you can, you know, stay stay lit. So I just want to let y'all know that that Doctor Cousin Jake is multifaceted. Okay, good. Listen, I see some bees in the chat. I'm extremely excited um, about today's session. Session. I feel like we've been on pillar three finances for ever, for ever. I feel like we've been on it ever. No, the uh, KC, the album's already completed. It is completed, but if you send me something and it, it fits with what I want for the album, then it'll be cool. It'll, you know, it's, we don't plan on making money from it. We ain't, you know, it's it's not, we ain't trying to go platinum, just, you know, for our group, for our people. We've been working on it for the last two years. I didn't really think that writing music was that hard. 
but it is. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we've been on pillar three, which is restoring finances. We've already been over cash flow creation. We've been over cash flow stacking. I mean, uh, hedging. Now, today we want to talk about cash flow stacking. Um, because in this third pillar of restoring finances, we have four. Um, y'all give me a word inside the pillar. We have four bullet points or focuses inside of restoring finances that are important which is cash flow creation, cash flow hedging, cash flow stacking, and um, cash flow, oh, and asset multiplying. That's what it is. The fourth one is asset multiplying. So we are absolutely going to be uh, talking about that uh, today. What's going on, cousins? Banker cousins, I'm ready for today's show. Let me see some more Bs to make sure. Four stage. I like four stages. Somebody else give me some four stages inside of four phases. How about four phases? What about four phases for you to, we're going to work on that together. That'll be pretty cool. Um, I do got an announcement. The private bank society is officially opening up to the public on black Friday. No, we don't have a black Friday discount. Uh, it ain't happening. We're not discounting our value. Four phases of restoring your finance. Uh, we'll probably figure something out. But um, so for those of you that are our banker cousins, you're already a part of the private bank society elite and you got that link. Just know, keep inviting people to the group. Keep talking about it because when we launch, it's going to be an amazing thing because there's no turning back. No turning back. OK, so let's start. The show. Y'all need to pay attention. And make sure you're paying attention because my daughter said. So let me turn on this board right here. And we are going to get to it. For those of you that are already in a private banking society, you're on the elite side. Um, how amazing is the, the community? How amazing is uh, the membership, the society? Like, are y'all are y'all enjoying it? Was it everything I said that it was? Let me see in the chat. Let the public see. Let the people see. And those of you that are not on the elite side, but you are still a part of the private bank society, the free common area. Um, how are you guys enjoying it? How are y'all enjoying the show? How are y'all enjoying the pie class? You know, like what what what, what are your thoughts? I am changing mics. I can never take the credit. I prefer all cash. Can y'all hear me loud and clear? I switched mics because I need to go to my lavalier so that I can go to the board and actually teach y'all from the board. Hold on, y'all. I move my. We may not be able to cut to the board like we used to. Man. Hey, um, I'm gonna tell y'all a quick secret though. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell y'all a quick secret that I think that y'all should know. Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell? Uh, Khalil said, if the elite side is anything like the free side, I know it's fire. You have no idea. All right, so listen, um, can anyone tell me why do you think that I run the show on my own? Can anyone tell me why you all think that I run the show on my own without a team? Can anyone tell me why? Can anyone tell you, can anyone tell
Tell me why. Oh, here we go. I fixed it. Uh, anyone? Control, no uh, no deviation, autonomy, because uh, you can. <laughs> I like Carol. Uh, blown away with the level of knowledge that I had no idea about. To stand by your body of work so your content stays authentic. I like that, Patricia. Um, the reason why, make sure I go, I can go. The reason why I um, do it myself is because it's really to show you all that you don't need a large team to create valuable content that you know people need. Um, I think that what happens is a lot of us get analysis paralysis because you think that you need a bunch. Now, I do have a staff. Y'all do know that. We do got a team. Y'all do not know that. But when it comes to this show and creating content, I want all of you all to know, like, you bad all by your daggone self. You, you, you bad all by yourself. And the moment you begin to just trust you, the moment you begin to start trusting your value, the moment you start to say, you know what, let me go ahead and get started. Because what is discouraging is for me to tell you to go run your business, go run this and this. And then, you know, I got a whole entire team that's running the whole show and it makes you feel like, hey, I can't I can't do what Dr. Jake is doing. But if y'all just can see you got a, I got a camera right here. I got some stuff that I do myself and. And I be making mistakes. I don't try to position like I'm perfect. I don't try to position like I, I got it all figured out at all times. And I want y'all to know. Like, it's OK for you to make mistakes. It's OK for you not to make the right play. It's OK for things to break down and and, and stuff don't work how you want it to work. It's absolutely OK. But the key to success is just getting started. That's why I do it so that you all uh, can see for yourself like it doesn't take it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot. OK, so let's go to the board. I just wanted to tell y'all that absolutely love you. And uh, I just want you to know that. OK, so let's talk about this. So we talked about the four pillars already. We talked about cash flow. We talked about cash flow creation. OK, we talked about cash flow creation. We talked about cash flow hedging. Now we're going to be talking about cash flow stacking. Because if you all remember, we're on our road to freedom, right? <clears throat> like we said on the last on the last pod class, um, we're on our road to freedom. And on this road to freedom, and on this road to freedom, I guess I deleted it. And on this road to freedom, You have to, I guess I deleted it from the last training. You have to understand for yourself. You got to understand for yourself that on our road to freedom and on our road to financial abundance and on our road to there, you have financial solvency, fin financial independence. I'll write it back down just in case anyone missed the class. If you missed any of our previous class, you can just go inside of the community and it's there or you can just scour the YouTube. So, so when you have the cash flow, you have the cash flow. Uh, we're all on this road. The road ends here and it's financial freedom. Okay. The first step is financial literacy. That's the first step, okay? Financial literacy. 
And I know when it comes to a lot of us, I know that when it comes to a lot of us, we think that this right here doesn't really matter as much as this. But you can never say this if you're not fully this. Y'all make sense? We want this, but we want shortcut information to get us here. But you can't stay free if you don't understand what freedom is at a, liter at a, at a literary uh, concept or level. So we go financial literacy, understanding the basics of money, currency, understanding what value is, understanding propositions, understanding sales, understanding skill sets. Like, for an example, inside of the community on the elite side. Uh, all right. So elite. So in the classroom, in our classroom area, we focus really heavily. We heavy on the skills. We're heavy on the skill sets because this is a part of financial literacy. Where pe whether people believe it or not, there is no way. There is no way that you can actually negotiate your value and get paid based on what you believe that you are worth. If you do not understand that mastery of skill sets that enhance your value is financial literacy. Because it's understanding as the market changes, as society changes, as things get more efficient and more competitive, I got to be higher on the on the uh, spectrum of, of, of mastery and proficiency with the skill sets that I have. Why is that a financial literacy understanding or concept? It's a financial literacy understanding or concept because if you do not know the importance of your skill set and how to compare it in the market and be able to sell yourself, you can never become financially free because you will always be dependent on someone else to provide it for you. And contrary to popular belief, the reason why with the private banking society, our goal is enhancing the family household $50,000 a year. And I'm not telling people, I want to show you how to make a million dollars in your business. It's because with $50,000 a year in surplus cash flow that you have, with the right liter literacy and the right strategy, because financial literacy is also understanding financial strategy that can propel you. Just with this alone, just with this alone right here, you will be able to create and build and become a millionaire just with $50,000 of surplus capital a year if you knew how to make that money move and how to make it work for you. Bank of Cousins, if, you pick it, if you're banking what I'm thinking, let me see some Bs in the chat. But when we don't want to master this, when we don't want to master this and we want to rush here, you may get a taste of this, but you'll end back here. God will treat you like Moses. He'll put, he'll keep you in that wilderness, letting you just look over at your overabundance, your land of milk and honey. But you will never be able to walk over it because you're not literate in understanding the appreciation that you must have here. Okay. So with financial literacy, then it becomes becoming financial, becoming financially independent. <clears throat> Coming, becoming financially independent. But you, you can't become financially independent. If you're not financially literate. Because someone who's financially literate and with strategy understands I don't need to earn a million dollars a year to create a million dollars worth of cash flow for me in my future. So being financially independent is having understanding of skill sets enough that even if somebody doesn't pay you at your job or on a contract what you believe that you're worth. You know how to move that money, multiply that money, grow that money so that it comes back in return. 
Does that make sense? But financial independence, I used to believe that financial independence was only your ability to go out there and make money and hustle and kill it, kill, you know, uh, kill what you eat and you don't depend on anybody. But the truth is, if you don't know how to grow what you earn, you are never financially independent because you will always be dependent on your next customer. You will always be dependent on your next client. You will always be dependent on your, your job paying you or your next policy that you close or the next real estate property that you close. You will always be dependent on the deal. And you can never become separated from being dependent on the deal or the opportunity or the job or the paycheck unless you know how to take what you have and go and grow it. See, a lot of people are enamored with Jesus taking two fish, five loaves of bread and feeding the multitude, but we missed the point. There is a duplication mechanism that you can make your money that's like two fish and five loaves of bread feed the multitude of your generations if you understood the specific strategies that are needed in this area. So it doesn't matter if you make a million dollars, a hundred thousand, a quarter million dollars a year. You are not in a better situation than somebody makes 40,000 a year if both of you don't know how to grow your money past what you earn. See, they say in scripture that uh, one of the punishments that God gave man when man disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden was that women would have a hard time conceiving babies. It'll be painful to birth something. And the other notion is that man would have to work by the sweat of his brow in order for him to be able to survive okay now me and my friends we talk about god all the time we're always dissecting scripture to get a deeper much more philosophical spiritual understanding that is past the context that is being read okay uh and what i want to say here is let's let's look at Let's look at Let's look at of the context of scripture just a little bit more. And if y'all banking what I'm thinking, y'all already know. I, there this has a lot to do with today's lesson. When it says that woman was uh uh um, punished by having a hard time birthing things and it made it painful. Let's, let's look at it deeper and talk about the feminine energy. Feminine energy is able to take the seed of the masculine, curate, nourish that thing and birth it out. Well, we all have feminine and masculine energy inside of us. This is not, you know, like wooly foo-foo. This, everybody knows that we all got masculine and feminine energy inside of us. Your feminine energy inside of you is your creator. Your masculine is your logic. It's your new. It's your numerology. It's the numbers. It's understanding science and mathematics. Okay, so when when we were punished, our our feminine was punished because it's hard for us to birth ideas without it being painful for us to have to, to execute it. The man, masculine energy, was punished. For what? Now you got to work by the sweat of your brow, which is hard labor, in order to be able to sustain your lifestyle. So not only is it hard for us to birth ideas, now it's harder for us because we got to work for the sweat of our brow. So all of us consti constitute financial freedom as if I work harder and I earn more money, me earning more money by my physical effort will bring me freedom and that's for understanding of what that is. In order for me to get back to my natural state of understanding, I got to do what Jesus was trying to show us. Take a small thing and multiply it and make it big. Take something small. He used examples. He gave he gave examples like um, the, 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 the servants and the master with the talents. 
And there was an example in scripture where Jesus, I mean, the master, Jesus was explaining that this master gave one talent to one uh, uh, servant. He gave two talents to another servant. He gave five talents to another servant. Each talent represented about a hundred thousand dollars, give or take, of currency in today's time. So one person got a half a million, another person got two hundred thousand, other person got a hundred thousand dollars. Everyone else doubled their money, but the person who got the hundred thousand dollars. Why? Because that person was not confident in their financial literacy in their strategy to grow what was given. So, so the master came back and he was displeased with the servant that just hid the money and didn't do anything with it. That's like hiding your talent because you're not, you're not, you're not committed to this process. Others took what was given to them. They multiplied it and doubled it. That's the concept to freedom. The road that we're on to freedom is not working by the sweat of your brow. It's understanding that there are some limitations that I have because of maybe my demographic, how I grew up, my history, my criminal background, the, you know, the way I talk, you know, uh, where I was raised, where I'm from. There are limitations that we cannot overcome just in itself. No matter how hard you work, you cannot get through the ceiling. This is why I tell people hard work alone doesn't get you to financial freedom. Because there's a mother working three jobs that works harder than me every day. But yet she doesn't make as much money as me. Why? Here and here. Here and here. And the only way that we are going to be able to. The only way that we are going to be able to really get to freedom it's understanding what this cash flow stacking really is. And in order for you to actually go and see the life of your dreams, you actually have to detach yourself from monetary thoughts or value of money other than what it is for. It is, is a, it is a tool. And whether we want to believe it or not, there are many of us that don't realize that we secretly worship money in disguise. We secretly worship money in disguise. Because the moment we make the money, the moment that we make the money, guess what happens? We take this money, right? And this is our business. And this is you, the controller of this entity. Thanks, Khalil. It's the controller of this entity. This is what happens. Other people, other people, OP. Other people give us their money in exchange for a service or a product. We then, as the controller of this entity, when we make this money, we get into possessorship. Mine. It's mine. I own this. This is my currency. We become like cavemen and women. And when you say mine, mine, mine. You never want to give it up. Have y'all noticed this? When we make money from our job, from our customers, from our clients, we get possessive. My money, my finances, my stuff. And when you possess it, you covet it. When you covet it, you're trying to cover it and hoard it. So what do we typically do with our money? We go and buy little trophies, watches, cars, clothes, shoes, because we don't want to give it up. So we invest in stuff. So now we can walk around with our money and wear our money and the money never leaves our cycle to come back with more friends. So you got to go from 
You got to go from possessive, controller, to a steward. Manager. See, when I release the possessive ship of currency that comes in, I no longer look at it as mine. I look at it as God's. And I am the head steward manager of the businesses he gave me. So it's not my money. It is his and I'm responsible for growing it. Y'all getting to financial freedom is a spirit. It's, it's more of a spiritual alignment than it is in a carnal physical system. So when I understand this, remember, we're trying to be like the banks, right? Everybody always say OPM, OPM. Let me ask you a question. If you're a controller, if you're a controller of this business, isn't it already other people's money that they're giving you money? Isn't it already OPM? Because last I checked, it started in their wallet at their bank in, in exchange for the service or the good, they exchange the service or the good, you exchange the service or the product for their currency. So it's already OPM in your house. But we go and spend this OPM, other people's money, and then go and borrow OPM at a percentage from the bank and we think that that is a great thing. You had OPM at no percentage. Now I'm going to go spend their money. Now you go and spend this OPM to then go and sign up to use other people's money from a middleman who's the bank. That is crazy to me. So if I understand cash flow the way that I'm supposed to, and I, and I understand that everybody says that wealth is built off other people's money. Ain't, ain't that what you, everyone always hears? If you're banking what I'm thinking, let me see B's in the chat if you agree. Everyone always says that what? Using other people's money is the best way for wealth, right? So when somebody has OPM, their own money that's going to your business in exchange for a service or a product, and it, that money hits your account here, you're the controller the steward this money is not yours the money that comes in from your business or your job is like in scripture it's your talent that God is giving you and hoping that you can multiply it and not hoard it and spend it and covet it he wants you to move it so it can make more money so with cash flow stacking, it's you taking out of the control of as soon as money come in, I'm spending it for my own personal good, my own personal gain. No, when money comes in, this is the talent that they spoke about in scripture. This money should immediately be ciphering out 
to do something and come back with more something. So when we talk about cash flow stacking, there are four elements inside of cash flow stacking that you must understand. The first element is product stacking. The second element is sales distribution stacking. Third thing is team stacking. Those are the three things. I'm sorry, not four. Those are the three things. Team stacking, sales distribution stacking, product stacking. The fourth one is acquisition stacking. See, these are the four things. Screenshot it. Four things. All right, so look. We go from financial literate to financially independent to financially solvent. Solvency is being able to cover all of your responsibilities. We talked about this in the other, other class. All your responsibilities without fail. So all your liabilities are covered every month no matter what. And then there's one more right here. We'll talk about it later. And then we'll, there's financial freedom there. Okay. So everybody got these four? Y'all got these four? Appreciate that, Khalil. Cash flow stacking. We got four elements of cash flow stacking. It is product stacking, sales distribution stacking, team stacking, and acquisition stacking. Okay. So when we're processing this, right, and you're thinking about how can my money go and make how can i put myself in the position where my 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 circumstance my circumstance of where i currently am i can multiply that okay but the unfortunate thing is if you run a business And you're making money from customers. And when the money comes in, you use that money for your own personal gain. So just buy stuff. You're never going to get financially free. That's not cash flow stacking. This is liability stacking. That's not cash flow stacking. None of this gets you free. And all of these food come with disease because most of us don't eat right. Travel comes with risk. Cars comes with menu, uh, uh, malfunctions. Homes, your personal house comes with repairs. None of this makes you cash flow back. So you will always be in the hamster wheel of your job or of your business performing and gyrating like clowns for the rest of your life because we continue to liability stack and we don't understand the importance of cash flow stacking. If you're banking what I'm thinking, put B in the chat. So there's two things that we're doing in our life. We're either liability stacking or cash flow stacking in our finances, on our finances. <clears throat> Everybody always talks about, and I talk about the history of banks. And I talk about the history of the Federal Reserve. And I talk about the history of how this cartel of independent, wealthy bankers came together and formulated the Federal Reserve 
after meeting with Franklin D. Roosevelt on Jekyll Island. They got him into office and getting him to the office. He had to agree to do an executive order to get us off the gold exchange and go to uh, the Fed. So that's a privately owned business by a private cartel of business of banks that run. OK, this this country's financial structure and and also across the world. OK, but one of the things that, that people fail to forget is that. These bankers were able to position themselves in this way because the extra money that they made, they didn't liability stack. They built up their cash flow so that when they are able to make a move on opportunities, you have opportunities to make a move on. <clears throat> this is a small understanding that I want you this is a small understanding that I want you all to understand. I want you to get it very, very clear, okay? Your life and how well you live it is comprised on your ability to take advantage of opportunities when it's presented to you. And most of us cannot take advantage of opportunities when it's presented to us because you don't have the financial means to do it. We traveled the money away. We ate our money away. We, well, we wore our money away. We drove our money away. We slept that money away. So when an opportunity comes up, we don't even have the currency to even invest or getting an opportunity that can generate us more cash flow. So the key is in the hedging piece that we talked about, Getting that surplus cash and that cash is not yours. I want y'all to understand this real quick. The money that you make in your business. Your first hundred thousand, if you can, your first million. But, you know, we live. Your first surplus of one hundred thousand dollars. Should be your focus on creating your own line of credit within your business structure. Because why? Most of us want to go to the bank so we can get a what? $20,000 credit card, a line of credit, $50,000 credit card, a line of credit, $100,000 credit card, a line of credit, million dollar credit card, a line of credit. And you already made all of that money yourself, but you spent it on BS. So now you got to go get charged to use money that you already had worked through. It's backwards to wealth building. Because to be completely financially free, you have to be completely able to stand alone and independent of any financial institutions that are out here or else you are not free. So with cash flow stacking, it's very imperative that outside of your need to live basis. Now, I am a firm believer that spoiling yourself or treating yourself when you hit a milestone is a need to live basis. But a lot of us be awarding ourselves for um, for uh, what you're supposed to do already. We be like, man, I worked hard this week. I deserve a drink. I deserve to go out of town. Man, I didn't work hard for three months straight. I need a vacation, but you haven't accomplished anything to vacation for. So we have false understandings of what and when to award ourselves. We give ourselves consolation prizes for doing what you're supposed to do. Not anything extraordinary, not anything amazing, but because, man, I just worked hard for three months straight. You didn't hit none of your goals, but we want to reward ourselves. That's crazy. So outside of my need to live basis, every other dollar that I make 
It's not for my personal use. It's for the building of my cash flow stacking strategies. Why? Because you can't cash flow stack without cash flow. You cannot cash flow stack without cash flow. So, the first thing with product stacking, the profits that you make, the surplus cash that you have, is for the investing into making your product better. Or creating a complementary product or service that you can add on to this product to make more money. So if I use my surplus cash to, to hire help to help me make more a better product and then create a complementary product that increases my cash flow from my surplus. But many of us can never create a better product or a, or a complementary product that has the same value as your original service or product because you're spending all your that gone money off of the money you made from your little service or the product that you have and you don't have enough money or resources to make your product better. So if your product never gets better, you're going to be out marketed and out competition in the marketplace. And now you're going to have to work harder to make the same money that you made before. Those of you that are entrepreneurs, let me ask you a question. I want you to answer in the chat. How many of you have been in an industry at least 10 years, the same industry? And what you're realizing is in that industry, you got to work harder to get the same exact money or result that you had that you that you could make previously. The longer you are in an industry, the harder it gets to make money if your product is not getting better. So, if you're in let's say the clothing industry, Oh, let me say this. Shandalyn said, this is so true. Jake, Shandalyn said, this is so true. Jake still doesn't care for vacations, really. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I don't need a vacation from my dream life. I'm living my dream life. I don't need a vacation from it. I don't need an exit from it. I don't need a break from it. Because I love this life that I'm in. Now. Now you may say, Jake, I don't get it. Let's say you had a shirt company, right? Say you had a shirt company and you were ordering your shirt company from you. You got a gilding shirt or you got one of them other shirts and you just slapping your logo on it and then selling it to the market. That's all you're doing. And all the money that you're making from your customer, you taking that and you living on it. So you got to keep the bank in your life to keep swiping the card to buy you more guild shirts just to put a logo on it versus saying, okay, this money that I'm making, it's not my money. This money that I'm making is not my money. And I don't want to live on it. I want to use this cash so that I can make this product better. So I'm not using a Gildan shirt. I'm using a distributor who makes my shirts from scratch 
which means I can raise the value of my pricing because I'm not just slapping a logo on there. I'm creating an actual design company. So my surplus cash is not for my personal gain. My surplus cash is to make sure that my game that I'm playing, I'm playing at the highest level that I can. So the better my product, the longer customers rock with me. Now, you may say, Jake, what do you mean? Well, in order for you to make your product better, you have to hire people that know how to read data. You got to hire a research and development team and a research and development team works on behalf of you getting all the stats and data to let you know which products performing the best. They bring the information back to you. Now you make that product better so that the customers actually what? Appreciate the product and stay with you. Why? Because if you don't make your product better, your cash flow will eventually die because people will leave you to go find the better product. So the first step of ensuring your cash flow the first step of ensuring your cash flow is making sure your product can upstand the cash flow long term. Uh, I'll give you another analogy, okay? It's like having a house. You buy the house, you renovate the house one time. You have a renter come and stay in the house, but you never update the house. You never fix the house. You never touch the house up. 10 years go by, 20 years go by. The house is getting dilapidated, but you're still trying to count on people wanting to pay the same amount a month or higher, but you never invested any more of your surplus back into your product that's creating the cash flow for you in the first place. That's hustling backwards. And when you create a complementary product, it's you're not creating any products that compete with each other. They complete each other. So when I secure my product that generates me the cash flow, I'm now going to create complementary products that anchor that cash flow. Now, Jake, what you mean? I'll give you an example. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. Okay. So everybody knows that we run a financial firm. And with our financial firm, we help people set up their banking system through insurance reserves. That's the first step. That's the initial product. Well, that product is a great product. It continues to evolve, right? It's an amazing product. It's great for you to store your surplus cash inside of insurance reserves. But one of the things I began to realize was that our clients had a hard time understanding what it took to grow their money, make more money, so that they in turn could actually get more and bigger insurance reserves. So I created, I made sure that my product was a better product. Let me tell you why. Because at first, we used to do a day class. We did a day class. From the day class, you set up an appointment from the appointment you got in your insurance reserve and from the insurance reserve, you are on your own. Now, this works because there are people in the insurance industry, in the financial industry that just do this. They'll give you one free master class or one appointment. They teach you in an hour or an hour and a half. Then you schedule an appointment from the appointment. Guess what they do? Then they get the insurance reserve and then now they're on their own. But what typically happens to a client that doesn't build a relationship with their advisor? 
at some point they're going to leave and find a different advisor that pays more attention to them. Yes or yes? Yes or yes, y'all? So this is not a model that me and my family and our family business can live on because that means in our world, we get what's called residuals. So a lot of people in the insurance and the financial industry don't get to actually participate in residuals. A lot of people like you in business, you don't get to participate from renewals or residuals or customers come you know, paying and patroning your business for a long time because you, we are doing the bare minimum to make money. And because we do the bare minimum, we get the bare minimum loyalty and commitment from our customers. So we don't create anything to add more value to our customers because we just want to take their money, but we don't want to secure and anchor them uh, uh, moving forward. So what we did was I said, OK, I know they like the class. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go from the free class. And then we're going to actually teach them finance and business. Like an institute. Actually, no. We went for the hour free class to now the private banking blueprint. Private banking blueprint course. That course was great because what? It teaches you everything about banking, finance, uh, and insurance. Great. So now they went from the free class to the course, from the course to the appointment, from the appointment to the close. They got their insurance reserve. They're a lot more confident. They stay a little bit longer, but eventually. They're still going to need some support because guess what? Just the course alone doesn't help people master it, right? So for the first five years of my business, we did not take a dollar of profit because that money was going back into my business to help me hire staff, uh, uh, make my products better, make my, uh, uh, make my services better so that I can continue to build this relationship with our customers. That's why there's nowhere on the internet where you will find one negative complaint about the private banking blueprint. My curriculum that I wrote. You'll never have a negative complaint about our insurance firm. Our financial firm. You'll never. Because we put so much money and emphasis back in securing the initial cash flow product. Because once you have a premier product or service, you got to then invest into anchoring that cash flow so that that cash flow can last you longer because you're using that cash flow to grow more money. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So I went from, okay. Okay, boom. They go through the course. Then they get the appointment. Then we do the insurance course. Now we're going to add a free Facebook group for us to stay connected. Well, then what we realized was we hired staff. We had advisors that were managing the Facebook group. But what we realized was these people don't stay connected if they're not growing with new education and new value every single month, year, quarter, or whatever. So we got to invest more money of our own into our system to make it better to offer more amenities so that our customers and our clients can continue to grow and stay with us long term, i.e. the private banking society.
So now they go for the class to the private banking blueprint course to the membership society, which is ongoing education on finance, business, technology. They set up an appointment. You get an insurance reserve. And then you go right back into the membership to continue to grow. When you make more money, you set up another appointment. You get another insurance reserve. You go right back to the membership uh, to do it again. When you make more money, you set up an appointment. You get another insurance reserve. So guess what I was able to do when I was able to invest back into my business to anchor in our original cash flowing product? We created a our original product was the insurance reserve. So from the insurance reserve, product one. The second thing we created was the course. Why? Product two, to give you more education and value. The third thing that was created was for the membership, private membership society. Why? To give you ongoing education regularly, updated what you need to continue to make more money, to grow more money so you can set more appointments and then open up more insurance reserves. But had I just took the money that we made from insurance reserves and went and just splurged it, we never would have got to this point where there's this anchor in this loop where our customers stay with us longer and some forever. This is where the banking starts. Because if you cannot anchor your original cash flow, there's no way you can actually grow your own banking system. So what did the banks do? The bank said, okay, we're going to take their money and secure their money. Then people start to say, no, nah, I can secure my own money. That's, oh, Juanita, you're right. Juanita said in the technology, oh yeah, in the technology to facilitate our business. So let me let me go here. Thank you, Juanita. Uh, 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 June, I said Juanita. Ju uh, Junie, uh, Junie, my bad. Uh, you, you know I know your name. All right. So not only that, now our clients they need a technology. So we created and built technology that will help them make their business efficient, so that so that they can make more money using our technology as well as our membership group. So we created a world where we provide immense support to our customers at the highest level. So we went from just doing insurance reserves for our client to now having a course for them, from a course to a private society with resources and education so they can continue to get access to amazing information so they can continue their journey to financial freedom. So our support long term is there. Now, these are business and entrepreneurs that we're helping to create. So what does that mean? They need technology to run their business efficiently. So we created technology to help our customers and our clients so that they can be able to continue to grow and run their businesses. So they're on our technology, you're on our courses, you're in our membership society, you're getting an insurance reserve. So now we're in a perpetuating machine that's going in circles and you love it there because the value matches what you're investing. So now I don't ever have to worry about our initial cash flow because our product is always keeping our customers happy and staying with us long term. When you anchor the cash flow, now you can talk about the other stuff. But if you cannot anchor your cash flow, 
it's going to be hard for you to ever get to the point to where you're actually becoming the banker. You got to anchor the cash flow. So this is what banks did. Banks said, okay, yeah, we can secure y'all's gold and silver. Then people start to say, man, I can secure it myself. So the bank said, damn, we got to create more products. Okay, we got a checking account that now you, when you invest in it, we give you interest because the banks actually started giving 8 to 12% interest on savings accounts. So now you got the savings account. Now we got the savings account. Now this savings account, it makes you interest. Yo, yo, you can't do that, say, uh, securing your own money. Then people are like, dang, that's right. Then people say, you know what? I can invest my own money. I can grow it myself. Then the banks say, yeah, but what about convenience? You ain't got to carry cash anymore. We got a card. Just swipe the card and it tracks everything electronically. So what the bank did, the bank evolved and added more products to make their customers almost dependent in a way, but not in a bad way, on their services. So they kept anchoring their customers because they need their customers to stay with them so they can play the banking game. No customers, no bank. You can't have a bank without customers. Cash flow that's coming in on a regular basis. Now the bank say, yeah, you know what? We know y'all go through hard time. So we'll give you a, uh, we'll call it a, uh, uh, we'll call it a uh, overdraft. We'll let you overdraft $250, $500, $1,000 in some business accounts. Ten, We'll let you overdraft $10,000. Just swipe the card. It's okay. So what does that do? Now that brings convenience. If I don't have the money, I can swipe the card and make it through to my next. So then they charge us for the overdraft. They, they charge a fee for the overdraft. So now they anchoring you. Now you need them. Not only do you need them, you love them because you can swipe your card and get what you need, even though the money isn't there. So the bank is anchoring, the bank is anchoring the commitment to the clients and customers. Think about it. How long, y'all put in the chat, how long have y'all been with, what's the longest bank and how many years have you been with them? What is the longest time and how long have you been with the bank that you're with? And most of us don't even know why we committed to that bank. They don't give you any extra amenities. They don't tell you happy birthday. You don't get a free line of credit. But because your entire life is dependent on that, you stay with that. Mr. Mr. Atkins, he's keep at you. Mr. Atkins, you're asking questions that I, I got a whole program about. So I'm that's why I'm not addressing uh, your questions, because this is not what your questions that you're asking have already been addressed in other uh, pod classes and inside of our or, uh, inside of our community. I'll let you know how to get inside of it later. See, some of y'all 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, right? Cool. So now when we start to think, you start to say, okay, well, so what did the bank do to anchor us? Oh, they gave us mortgage, finance, car payments, credit cards, line of credit. So before you know it, you got a bajillion of the products from the bank. So where you going to go? Mortgage with the bank. Car note with the bank, credit card with the bank, line of credit with the bank, your checking account with the bank, security deposit with the bank. So you own so many products with that bank. They can depend and count on your cash flow. 
Now they can go play the banking game. Jake, how does this work if I work a job in a career? Get your job. Get your job to depend on you for more than one thing. You secure your cash flow from the job. See, when you only offer one thing and you don't even get better from it for it, you just doing your job. Then when they say, can you do this? Can you do that? No, not if you don't pay me. Are you crazy? If I work the job, I will be doing everything because I need them to depend on me. I become the best at doing it. Now I can leverage and say, no, nah, you got to pay me more money or I'm out. The more your job, your customer, or your client depends on you, the easier it is to leverage. It's easy. The easier it is to leverage. Anchor your cash flow and you'll be fine. The more things your customer or your client depends on you to provide for them, the more committed they'll be to y'all's relationship. No different than a job. It's easier to leverage. Okay? I want y'all to understand that. So, once we anchor, once we anchor our product stacking and we anchor that product, That's not true, uh, Mr. Atkins. That's not true. That's not true. Most of us don't know how to leverage and position ourselves. Most of us don't know how to leverage and position ourselves. That's why we get let go and we get fired. When you are irreplaceable and your job needs you, if your job can replace you with somebody with less pay, they don't need you. If your job can replace you with somebody with less pay, they don't need you. If your customer can replace you by going to someone else cheaper, they, can, they don't need you. But when you are the best at what you do, the job needs you or your customer needs you, it's harder for them to replace you. And matter of fact, they will be willing to pay you more for you not to leave them. So after we do our product stacking, I want to ensure that my product is indestructible. We teach y'all inside of the community. We teach y'all inside of the community. Inside of the skill sets in the, in the elite community, we teach you how to create an indestructible product right here. From scratch, we teach you how to create an indestructible product from scratch. Three hour training, four out of seven hours of training. We teach you how to create an indestructible product. And the reason why we teach you how to create an indestructible product, uh, somebody said my sound out. Is my sound out? I don't think it's out. Can y'all hear me? Somebody said my sound was out. I'm looking at my sound. So when we talk about the indestructible product. When we talk about this indestructible product, okay, this is what I'm teaching you, how to make your product indestructible. That's important. 
once we do that product stacking to make our product indestructible, y'all, y'all, our product offering is indestructible. Here's why. There is no one on the internet <clears throat> that teaches private banking with insurance reserves like we do that offers our client so many amenities that makes them better financially, uh, personally, in their business. We offer technology, private membership with education and resources that we continually add stuff to. We teach you skill sets to keep you up to date and abreast with the changing that's happening in the marketplace to keep you valuable to your market, to your business, or to your job. We give you access to teach you exactly how to lend your money, how to invest your money, how to grow your money, all in one major offer. So when we talk about product stacking, the products that we stacked that all generate us cash flow independently is indestructible. So this is checked. The second thing now, sales and distribution stacking. Sales and distribution stacking. What is sales and distribution stacking? If your model is dependent upon one sales channel, you are going to be a victim of whatever that sales channel wants or, or doesn't want to do. What I mean by that? If you only depend on Instagram and you're not on every other platform, you're too hyper dependent on one platform. So if Instagram shut down, if people stop going to Instagram, if people stop personal on Instagram, if Instagram changes your algorithms, your sales change. If you're depending upon one media strategy, one radio station, <clears throat> one customer or client, or one salesperson that's generating all of your sales, you are going to be subjective or uh, imprisoned to what they feel and how they feel. I would much rather, if I had a sales team, I would much rather have a bunch of people <clears throat> that make $10,000 a month for the company than having one person that makes 90000 Why? Because if one person is making $90,000 for the company and we're hyper dependent on one person, that one person could leverage. That's what I just talked about. So when I'm overly dependent on one person to produce or one platform to produce or one <clears throat> or one uh, or one news outlet to produce or one uh, influencer to produce or one marketer to produce, my business is vulnerable to however that person, platform, marketer, influencer feels about me, the company, or selling our product. They can hold us hostage. So when we talk about product stacking to protect the cash flow, sales distribution stacking is making sure you use as many marketing channels as possible to make sure not one person or one platform could corner you to doing business with them or selling through them. There's not one influencer on the planet that can say I depend on them in, uh, in, in, in entirety. I got so many influencers and people that I partner with and market with that I do business deals, joint ventures with that no one person can say that oh, I made Jake or I made this business. So when they say, when scripture says, don't invest in not just multiple, seven streams of income. Y'all remember they say that? Everybody say multiple streams of income. Do y'all remember them saying that, right? Come on. If y'all banking what I'm thinking, put B's in the chat. 
Y'all remember what people say multiple streams of income, more streams of income. You need multiple. People don't have the context. More than seven streams of income came from King Solomon writing in Proverbs how to ensure your financial wealth. When he said multiple streams of income, he was referring to the boats because he used to sail uh, horses and chariots to countries that had slower animals for transportation. And when he first started doing overseas transactions internationally, he was sending it on one or two boats or one or two sales distribution channels. And if one of the boats were taken by pirates, it went down because of the waves. It never made it to shore or the people that they were in partner with decided to keep the goods and not pay him for it. He couldn't be dependent on one boat making it there and making it back. Because it can get seized, it can be put on fire, it can it can drown, you know, in the water, it can crash. So he sent multiple boats that had multiple chariots and horses on there so that when he pushed his product internationally, he wasn't overly dependent on one stream or channel or distribution boat to come back to sustain his kingdom. That's what that means in context. So multiple streams of income does not necessarily mean multiple businesses or multiple offers. It means I'm not being overly dependent on one channel to do and produce all of the money for me. That's right, Charles with the Riddler Group. <clears throat> it's called mitigating your risk. So I'm going to send multiple boats out. So if two boats sink, I still got five boats coming back with my money. That's why I post on multiple platforms. That's why I do multiple partnerships in marketing deals. Because if one deal don't work, one monkey don't stop no show. But because we get lazy, we say, oh, this channel or this person, this channel or this person, they making me a lot of money. So I'm going to spend this money because I'm dependent on them to be loyal to me because we making money together for a lifetime. Stop the cap. <laughs> One person don't stop no show. We stop doing business together. That's fine. I love you. But guess what? I got five more of you lined up. Why? Because I invest and I keep my capital and I keep my money infused in the business and I'm not purchasing dumb stuff. I don't purchase cars that lose value. I don't purchase jewelry that cheapens. I don't purchase land that loses value. I purchase things that will grow in value. So if I had to liquidate to put back into the company, it's no issue for me. That's why I put my extra cash inside of insurance reserves so that I'm building my own line of credit. When our company hit bumpy roads, I lent our company back $600,000 from my person, personal assets. I lended the company back over $600,000 to sustain the company during a bumpy period in time. <clears throat> I'm not overly dependent on one distribution strategy. This is why inside of inside of the private banker society, the elite, we teach you so many skills. 
We teach you with content creation, influencer marketing, uh, content posting, using this. We teach you how to navigate these things. And the reason why we're teaching you how to navigate these things, you're always going to be in a great position. Now, now this is why when you're growing your cash flow and your cash flow stacking, you're not just hiring multiple people, hiring multiple marketers for the strength of flexing your muscles to say you're a big dog. You're doing that to mitigate your risk because you cannot afford to be overly dependent on one other hairstylist, one other barber, one other marketer, one other influencer, one other distribution company, one other marketing company, one other consulting company. I ain't overly dependent on nobody. So anyone can leave me and I'm going to be okay. Anyone can walk off from my life and I'm going to be okay. That's what distribution stacking is. Any market or influencer can say, I don't want to do business with Jake no more. That's fine. I got more of you. I got multiple distribution channels for multiple markets, for multiple cultures, for multiple demographics. Because I'm not overly dependent on one sales distribution strategy. If you're banking what I'm thinking, let me see some B's in the chat because I know I'm teaching. This is why when you make money from one platform, you don't spend that money. You take that money, you get on another platform. Then you take that money, you go get on another platform. Then you take that money, you use that influencer. You partner with that influencer. That money that you're making is to anchor your cash flow. We're, we're walking on our road to financial freedom, but if I'm not anchoring anything, I'm going to lose everything. God, that going it, Dr. J. Y'all need to pay attention. <clears throat> This is why I tell people when it comes to your success in business. People be like, okay, how fast can I make this? There is no how fast. Because you're always trying to master and make sure that you're mitigating your risk. That's why a bank would never give a certain amount of money of their portfolio to one, uh, one uh, investment bank or one company. They always mitigate their risk. Because they're protecting their principal. They're protecting their money. They're protecting their streams of income. So when people think, oh, one person, oh, y'all, they just being greedy. They make enough money. They can settle down. No, that person is mitigating their risk. No, I can't just hire one social media person because when this social media person start feeling entitled and he's done, he's not actually increasing his value. He's just sitting on his loans. I got two other social media people ready to take his position because he think he better than what he is. I got sales. I got two, three, four, five people because they think they're better than what they are because people will get entitled when you win in business, when you're operating right, people will get entitled and forget without you, there wouldn't be their position. So you always got to have somebody in the rear coming up that you're training, that you're teaching, that you're growing, that you're multiplying. The reason why you grow your establishment is because, yes, your franchise may be winning in your city right now. 
but eventually your franchise may not be winning. So you're supposed to grow and expand, use the capital that you're making, go to other cities, go to other markets, go to other states. Why? Because I'm not overly dependent on one sales distribution because I know that somebody else could come and take my market. So while people think that people are being greedy by growing, you don't realize they're just protecting and mitigating the risk. <clears throat> How many of you know <clears throat> you can think of a store or a business? <clears throat> and sorry if I'm yelling, y'all. I just get passionate. And when I yell and I teach this long, I get a headache. I, I try to do better, but I, I'm going I'm to get there. How many of you? ATL, ATL Kayla said, this is so freaking uncomfortable and true. This call out is real. How many of you know that there are businesses that used to be popping in your area that end up shutting down, but in another area, they still popping, just not in the original area you knew? How many of y'all know about that? How many of y'all experienced that? It's new to a new environment, but it's old to your environment, and that business shut down in your location. It happens all the time. Why? Distribution. When, when clients get tired of a certain product, and it never changes, and it never gets better, clients and, and customers eventually want to go to something different. So you got to keep introducing your product to new markets so that it's new to somebody else. Y'all, hey, y'all, we got Mr. Atkins, Mr. Atkins ready. Mr. Atkins ready. You can go to privatebankerssociety.com. All of my banker cousins put privatebankerssociety.com in the comments so that anybody can go join our, our free group. We got a free community, Private Banker Society, where we teach and give you game. You got access to the community to taste it out. And then on Black Friday, we are launching the Elite Program where everybody will be open to all of the teachings and the trainings that we have. Sales distribution. This is why expansion is important. And this is why you cannot covet or hoard your money. A lot of people say, Dr. Jake, you be teaching the same thing over and over again. Is there anything new? No, I'm doing the same thing. I have nothing new to teach you. But if I keep introducing who, what I do and what I deliver to new markets, it will be new to someone else. It will be old to you, but new to them. I'm going to keep introducing it to those markets. <clears throat> For an example. I remember when I used to uh, market inside of churches. I used to do free classes and stuff with churches, whether it's a mega church or a small church. Eventually, you set up shop in that church. Eventually, the capacity of how much money you can make in that organization, that church or that location will, 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 will meet capacity. It will meet capacity. And when it and when it meets capacity, if I'm over dependent on one church to make me all of my money, it's going to eventually die out. So I can't be subjugated to any one location because my business is going to be dependent only solely on that location. Team stacking. Team stacking is important. And here's the thing that people fail to realize. Did, hey, none of y'all, none of y'all listen to nothing I just said. I asked y'all to put the site link in the privatebankerssociety.com. If you go to privatebankerssociety.com, 
If you go to privatebankerssociety.com. Oh, that's wrong. That's a banker. It's bankers. Privatebankerssociety.com. See, y'all sleeping. Y'all could have, y'all, your banker cousins, y'all could have sent y'all a link. Privatebankerssociety.com. You can join the community for free. Let me give you a, a, a quick sneak peek of it real quick. This is the free community that you'll join. Not the elite private banker society where all of the other stuff is. Just this one. And, you know, we got classroom stuff, things that you'll be able to learn here. Um, uh, introduction of our community and how things work. You can go in here and start asking people questions. <clears throat> we just we did a beta launch of it. A week ago, we already got close to 250 people a part of this program. You can look up the members. You can chat with them. You can figure out their bio, what they do. And then in the elite program, in the elite program, it's not open. We got our council in here right now. But the elite program, when we open it, you guys are going to be able to see all the skill sets that we teach. You're going to be able to even see the business case studies and business models that we build out. And as y'all can see, I'm not. there's no shortage of value in teaching that we give. No shortage. It's going to continuously get growing. And then also a part of the community, when you join that membership, you get basic use for free to the technology to build your business on. But y'all better. Y'all need to pay attention. Y'all ain't paying attention. So <clears throat> team stacking is important. If you're splurging, <clears throat> Since us, uh, if you are splurging your your capital, thinking it's your money, Khalil say, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." Khalil say, "Man, the free society is official. I can't wait till Friday. Me either, brother." So, um, so so here's the deal. Here's the deal. When we talk about team stacking, this is important. Because we make the money from the business, then we splurge our cash. We splurge our cash on BS and we don't have any money for team stacking. See, contrary to popular belief, the number one money making asset that you have is a business that can run without you. If you can create a business that runs without you, you have unlimited potential cash flow. You could sell it. But when you spend your money and you don't invest that money and you don't stack for products, you don't stack for distribution, you don't stack for a team, you're going to be solely doing everything yourself because you spent all the money out. So when you're taking the cash that you're making, that's your line of credit. That's OPM. Build your cash flow machine before you splurge on yourself. So if when I first got started, my goal was to make $10,000 a month myself. Then my then my next goal was to make $10,000 a month from my business without me having to do any of the main work. I just wanted to be the visionary. So I went from wanting to make $10,000 a month myself to then just earning $10,000 a month from my business, but it runs pretty much autonomously absent of me. So my meetings are ran without me. My marketing is ran without me. My social media is ran without me. My operations ran without me. My HR is ran without me. Execution of policies are ran without me. Our technology companies ran without me. So I'm focused because I team stacked and I share the capital coming in and I finance the business so that I can participate in just the overflow of the cash flow and not the doing of the work of the cash flow. Team stacking is important. We teach that inside of the school. It's not available yet. 
<clears throat> but it will be available in this leadership development inside of leadership development it, we're also going to talk about building your company team stacking executive stuff and all of that then the fourth model is the most important model it's called acquisition stacking if i never would have saved the money from the profits we were making from our business i never would have been able to buy tech companies and buy other businesses out that anchor my cash flow for our business. So we bought tech companies so that we could be able to provide tech solutions to our clients, but we're not dependent on just my business. The tech companies have their own business because we acquired them. We get to participate in the cash flow of other business models, but I do not have to run those companies. They're ran without me. But if I didn't keep my cash flow, and anchor my cash flow, invest in my team stacking, invest in my distribution stacking, I wouldn't have had enough time and capital to go and acquire other businesses that already has staff and leadership that I partner with so I can participate in more cash flow without me exerting any more of my actual physical effort. And whether anyone wants to tell you or not, you have to pay for your freedom. Freedom comes with a price. And in order for me to get here to financial freedom, I have to understand, and I told you I'll tell you this part, In order for you to get to financial freedom, you got to first pay for it. But because we are want to live today and act like we're free, we never get free. So we we enslave our future freedom to act like we free today. God damn, Dr. J, they not even. Y'all need to pay attention. So we enslave our future self to act like we free today and end up working the rest of our lives to pay off what we no longer own. Press, hey, hey, press the number three in the chat. We're gonna put the threes up. If you right now are still paying for a decision that you made years ago and you don't even use that thing anymore, you don't, you're not even using that decision anymore. You're not using that car no more, but you're still paying for it. You're not your your the vacation that you went on. You still paying for it on your credit card and in the vacation gone. Clothes you still paying for it. <clears throat> A child that you had you are still paying for it. D. Robin said this is so good, y'all. Imagine being in the elite society, y'all. I don't even share half the stuff. <laughs> this is not even a third of a fourth of the stuff that the elite get in the society. If y'all think this is something, imagine, just imagine, just imagine, just imagine all the things that we <laughs> could be. Imagine all the places we could go and see. I'm just playing.
Cheryl said, as always, Cousin Jake, you teaching. I appreciate that. Bank of Cousins. Because we thought we was free and we could afford a child and, and all that, you know. So you was doing free stuff. And now you still paying for a child that you still can't pay for. But you got to love them because they here. <laughs> Kayla, so I'm about to go push this client off the table. <laughs> Just to go run down Peachtree. <laughs> so when we think about it, we can't do none of this. We can't do none of this if you don't train this. Some people came to my house and they said, Dr. J, uh, with all that you own and all that you make, I thought your house would be like bigger. And I told them, I said, for what? So I'm going to put $2 million into a house that we don't even we don't even use every inch of this little house. So I'm going to put two million dollars of free cash to put in a house to impress who? When I can use that same two million dollars to go and buy a company that cash flows me thirty thousand dollars a month for the rest of my life. So why would I pay two million dollars in a house that I got to pay in expenses every single month, year, quarter and make it better and update it? When I can buy a business or invest into a company for $2 million and make $30,000 a month in passive uh, distributions for my ownership stake. <clears throat> I can lend that money at 20% a year and make $400,000 a year from lending that money. Why on earth would I go get a big house? When we don't even use, we got a space, a space in our house right now that we just put furniture and stuff right there and don't nobody go in that space. For what? Having a lot of children, cool. Your family lives with you, cool. But other than that, what are we talking about? Because cash flow stacking is protecting your cash flow, anchoring it, controlling the distribution, team stacking, in acquisitions, Here, here's, a, here's a small little funny thing that a lot of y'all don't know. <clears throat> Most of y'all don't know that I actually stopped charging to speak at conferences. Can somebody answer why you think I stopped charging to speak at conferences? Anybody? If you're going to have at least 40 people in the room, all you got to do is pay for my travel and my hotel and I'm there. I don't charge to speak anymore. Can somebody guess why? Somebody said free marketing of your skills. Oh, Renee, you learning. Sales distribution stacking. Sales distribution stacking. If somebody pays me 
Now I'm subjugated to whatever the contract of the payment is. So if somebody pays me to speak, I can't market my products like I want. And I care more about distribution of my products and services than getting paid to speak. So as long as I can speak on that stage and get people's numbers and get an, and, and create an offer, I'm going to make more money than I would if I were to charge for my time to speak at an event. Reed said it right on a month. Sales distribution stacking. If the room is large enough, we pulling up in that thing. They get in value from somebody like me and us coming to speak. They can market. They can sell tickets. They can do whatever. But when I hit that stage, I need full freedom of my offer. I want to collect numbers. I want to get people to text. I want to get their information because I want to control my sales distribution stacking. People got a podcast. I'll go on anybody's podcast if you got at least 100 subscribers, anybody, <laughs> sales distribution stacking. <clears throat> because if I did a thousand interviews, <clears throat> Kayla said, Well, damn, I'm slow still. Got, I got you now. Uh, my short bus is picking up. This is good. Uh, think about it. If I go on a thousand podcasts that have a hundred subscribers, that's a hundred thousand people. My product got into the ears of the visuals of to the hands of. If I go to one person that got a hundred thousand followers. The odds of me actually being able to reach all 100,000 followers and subscribers is a lot smaller because of algorithms than it is for me to be on a platform with somebody who got 100 listeners that are all listening. Now, I do still partner with big influencers and marketing channels. But my sales distribution stacking helped when I got on the Internet because I was established and because I had cash flow. I was able to get on a couple of the largest influencer marketing platforms in the country. So I went from zero followers. To dang near a half a million, a half a half a million followers on all of my social media platforms because I had cash to pay to play. Listen, look at Wendy. Look at Wendy said. Wendy said, that's how I found out about Cousin Jake from a conference. Hey, in the comments right now, how many of you found me from somebody else's platform, somebody else's conference and tell me what conference it was in the chat right now? I'm about to I'm about to prove y'all a point right now. I only create a lot of content on my page for people to binge. I market on other people's platform. I teach on mine. I market on theirs. I teach on mine. Regina said, Dr. Jamisa. Charles Rilla says, I can't financial. I teach on mine. I market on theirs. David Sands. Jamisa MacGyver, David Sands, BWO, Brother Ben. Renee said it was your podcast that I found you. I didn't even know I had a podcast. I guess. Uh, thank you.
Junie said, accelerate 180 with King Ashley Ann. This is amazing. Uh, D. Robbins said, Julian, Julian Gordon's uh, 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 conference. Do y'all see what I'm seeing? Do y'all see what I'm seeing? Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Sales distribution stacking. I create amazing value on my page. And because I save my currency, my money, or people want to participate in a uh, profit share of their market coming and purchasing from us. And when they send people to us, we break bread on the back end. A cam said, I found you from uh, Derek Grace. Y'all banking what I'm thinking now. You getting it. You're understanding. I can't just depend on my platform. I got to go to other people's platform. I got to break bread with them. I got to pay them. Look, Kayla said, watch this. Kayla said, well, Brian Bean told me about you. Then I saw you on Social Proof, and I finally met you at the Derek Harford Conference. Y'all see that? Y'all see this right here? Brian Bean told Kayla about me. Then she saw me on Social Proof Podcast. Then she met me at the Derek Harper Conference. Three different platforms. And Kayla is now one of probably the most, one of the top committed uh, uh, students or members a part of our society. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down. So when I understand the context and I'm realizing the play I got to make, if I spent all of my money and I didn't product stack, my product was trash, I spent all of my money so I couldn't do this deal, I didn't have a team to help me facilitate overflow from big marketers, and I didn't have other products that I could offer in acquisition stacking, Y'all wouldn't be listening to me right now. So we're going on two hours. <laughs> if you found this valuable, like the video right now. If you found this valuable, like the video right now. If you want to access if you want to access our private banker society, it is free to join the free part of our society, but it's not free for the affiliate program. I mean, the elite, the elite private bank society elite um, is opening um, in, a, in a couple of days. It's opening in a couple of days. Um, Melinda said those two hours flew by fast. <clears throat> It's opening in a couple of days. Please share this to one person that you sent out. If you're a banker cousin already a part of the private bank society elite, you already know, send your link out to somebody else so that if they click that link, they can go see it. Privatebanksociety.com. Privatebanksociety.com. Privatebankersociety.com. Join a free community. You'll be able to get access to the community. Um, and then when Black Friday comes, you'll be able to pop right into um uh, that so Ignacio said that the uh, it, the registration for Friday is there. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna just walk you through it. Private Banker Society. I'm gonna share my screen. If you go to Private Bank Society right now, how you and your family can survive the potential economic crash in 2023, you can sign up for the Black Friday Live Workshop and reserve your seat here at Private Bank Society. We're launching it on Friday the 25th at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, East or Central, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is your countdown. Once you register, once you register,
once you register, the link is going to be sent to your email and you're going to be able to register here. Y'all got it? So go to privatebankersociety.com. <clears throat> Sign up for the free workshop that we're going to be going over. Um, <clears throat> that we're going to be going over how to survive the 2023 uh, uh, crash. Um, and then that's going to be the indoctrination or the start point to talk about the society and everything that you have. So if today's pie class was amazing, you've been banking what I'm thinking. Let me see some bees in the chat. Y'all need to pay attention. Let me see some bees if y'all if y'all value. Renee said you will never regret registering. Appreciate that. Even if you are a part of the society already, you're going to still want to register for that workshop. Okay? Put some bees in the chat if you bank it what I'm thinking. You understand what I'm saying? You got value from today. My goal on a pie class is always to give more value than people charge for. So that when you actually pay for our services, you know it's going to be well worth it. Because if this is the information that I'm giving you for free, just imagine what 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 you get inside the membership society. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Cool, cool. All right. So now I got to close the vault to the podcast show. <laughs> And I'll see y'all next time. Because y'all know our goal is to make families great again. Let's get it. I love you, Holly. Got it, but let's buy some land and build a family that's a grown up flex. Let's see a black man winning and get so upset. This is generational, inspirational, integrative though. On the ride vertically, working like I ain't made it though. This is for my people. Locker room speeches. Listen while I'm teaching, nails trying like a kiss. Stole it like I'm Jesus and brought it back like a re up. Had to demonstrate the blessing for people who couldn't see it. Now we building assets before we splurge our cash. We was talking about the dream, dog. We heard y'all laugh. Now they talking about the team and I heard y'all last I can never take the credit, I prefer all cash, look, laughing at the crib cause I done turned into a bank, probably turned into a mogul before I turned into a saint, was just a man on his grind and I turned it into great, turn my struggle into hustle and you know I'm getting paid let's go yeah. I love you Bobby I don't even know the hat, huh? Love. Yeah, they got it bumping. Hey, it ain't even about the money, it's about the potential. A lot of people play the game without the fundamentals. I can see it in my mind, it's all about your mental. Till I turn into a tangible, it's all pretend though. I'll be focused on the vision that's in front of me. We gon' turn these L's into luxury. I done turn these thoughts to a company. It ain't even up to me. Why you think I'm walking with the sun so comfortably? All I got is God to accompany. All I saw were odds out in front of me. Then I realized they ain't touching me. Only thing can stop me is my unbelief. I see Maseratis when I go to sleep. Wake up to a coffee and the dopest beats. Rap is just a commentary. Everything I do from here is legendary. Even if I never write a verse again, I purpose with the best of everything. I was born to win. Yeah.